What's up, traveler? Fights. You like fights, right? I mean, that's why you must have clicked on this video. A fight can elevate a story to new heights, depending on what it's for. My favorite type of fight is one that was built up, a confrontation that we knew was coming. Sasuke versus Itachi, Yuji versus Mahito, Midoriya vs. Shigaraki, Ichigo vs. Grimjow, the list goes on. But today, we're talking about the exact opposite. We're talking about fights that had little to no buildup. Fights that no one expected to see, no one could have anticipated, but still ended up becoming one of the greatest fights in that respective story. We're talking about fights that we didn't know we needed. Still here? Okay, cool. So that means you decided to take a rest at this checkpoint. Well, Traveler, I hope you enjoy your stay. The York New City arc is a masterpiece, and this fight is one of the reasons why. The Phantom Troop are causing havoc. So the Mafia hires multiple assassins to take them down. Two of these assassins are Silva and Zeno Zoldic. Seeing these two walk into that room gave me whiplash. And I can imagine that I'm not the only one whose excitement started to skyrocket. We are getting the opportunity to see two of the strongest Zoldic family members in action. And against the Phantom Troop, no less. You've seen how terrifying the troop is. So now, it's time to see how terrifying the Zoldics are. It's crazy that Karapika was right outside the door from Krolo. We could have seen the confrontation between Karapika and Krolo earlier, but Togashi, the author who is known for subverting expectations, said, Not yet. It's not Karapika's time yet. It's their time. God, this fight is something special. Bro, and the fact that we have two versions of this, bro, bro. This fight did not disappoint when it came to showcasing what Silva and Zeno could do. They basically didn't even give Krolo the chance to utilize his abilities the way he wanted to. Probably because they knew if they did, they'd be screwed. Zeno being prepared to die in order to kill him should tell you how dangerous Krolo is. Him early on making an attempt to steal their abilities, but realizing that against them, it's just not gonna work out. Not only are the Zodiacs strong, but they're extremely perceptive and observant, able to deduce how Krolo's abilities work. It's safe to say that the assassins are great at their job. I will say this though, I prefer the 90s version visually with his hand-drawn backgrounds, the vibe, the aesthetic. I uh, made a whole video on 90s anime, which you probably should watch. The storyboarding of the 90s version is phenomenal, so fluid and so well choreographed. The animation of the 90s version of Hunter x Hunter is one of its biggest strengths. Not to say that 2011 isn't visually beautiful also. I actually prefer the 2011 version overall. Of course, the main reason is because it tells the whole story. Well, as much of the story as it could tell. I just prefer it for many other reasons. For example, when it comes to sound, both the sound direction and the music, 2011 wins by far in my book. <laughs> I do really enjoy the music from the 90s anime though. It gives me like a retro RPG vibe. And while the sound effects of the 90s anime definitely isn't bad, I don't think I'd say I love it. It's good, great at times, but... <laughs> Like, bro, come on. The sound design of the 2011 version is superior in my opinion. It's God tier. Toshi Iwata, who also did the sound effects for One Punch Man Season 1, worked on the sound effects for the anime. These sound effects combined with the visuals in the 2011 version makes this fight incredibly satisfying. <laughs> You can literally watch this fight with no context of this story and you can still be extremely entertained. Both versions of this fight are amazing. For Silva and Zeno, this was just business. Although Silva had fought Krolo in the past as revealed in this fight, 
their reason for fighting ended when the person who was going to pay them died. This fight was against three fucking monsters. And I feel like this was only a taste of their capabilities. Something that I'll probably discuss another time. Hey Traveler, do you remember watching Mugen Train in theaters? Yes. Okay, cool. Then you must remember the fucking jump scare. We just finished beating Enmu. I thought the movie was about to end. Like we'd get an aftermath epilogue type thing. We beat the demon, everyone on the train is safe thanks to Rengoku. Let's go hop. Yeah, that didn't happen. Instead, this Believe dude me. pulled up. But of course, in hindsight, I'm glad he did. Because if he hadn't, this arc wouldn't have been as amazing as it is. And we wouldn't have gotten one of the greatest fights in the story of Demon Slayer. To be honest, I'm not even gonna bother going on about the animation, because what more can I say that hasn't already been said? Studio Ufotable elevates the story of Demon Slayer to new heights with this production. Thank you to the staff of Ufotable for pouring so much love into the story of Demon Slayer and all of their other works. All I'll say is that this is one of the most well choreographed sword to fist fights I've ever seen in my life. But the brilliance of this battle isn't just in the action or the spectacle. It's what it means for the greater canon of Demon Slayer. This is a battle of ideals. The demon believes humans are weak because of their short, fleeting lives, and the swordsman believes humans are strong because of their short lives. That because human lives are so short, they're precious invaluable and you should cherish every moment you're given. Akasa believes that the strong should have long lives. They should be given the time to hone their prowess and reach new heights. And if not, they should die while at the peak of their strength. Akasa genuinely believes that Kyojuro is special, one of the chosen, and could ascend to the realm of one of the strongest, which is why he constantly praises him during the fight, while Kyojiro has fully accepted what it means to be human, saying there is no shame in growing old and eventually passing. It's a part of being human. There's beauty in that. This battle demonstrates what the Demon Slayers will be up against in the future. While Akaza sure as hell isn't weak, he's only number three of the upper moons. It also shows us just how talented and strong the Hashira truly are. Rengoku has excellent swordsmanship, insane speed and power, and is a master of his breathing style, flame breathing. This showcases what an amazing character Rengoku is. He embodies the message of overcoming limits and chasing your dreams and goals no matter what anyone says, even if it's your own loved ones. He'll keep moving forward without needing affirmation from anyone and that is so powerful and inspiring. Kyojiro threw everything he had at Akaza but unfortunately his foe was just too strong but as Tanjiro said Rengoku was the true victor of this battle. He may have lost a fight against Akaza but he fulfilled his duty as a demon slayer. He saved everyone on the train, helped Tanjiro heal and saved his life. When he was young his mother told him to protect those who couldn't protect themselves and he did. Kyojiro Rengoku is the true winner of this battle. And before he departed from this world, he gave Tanjiro, Inosuke, Zenitsu, and us a message that has stuck with me ever since he said it. If you are feeling disheartened, that you are somehow not enough, set your heart ablaze. <laughs> Dry your eyes and look ahead. You may feel like digging your heels in. But the flow of time waits for no one. It won't patiently stand by as you grieve. You coward! Make no mistake, I'll remember your face. And when we meet again, 
I'm going to save her tearing you limb from limb! And now, from an unexpected battle, a new one has begun its build-up. Well, Traveler, uh, if you're crying right now, I'm sorry. Those were two amazing fights that were completely unexpected. I really hope you enjoyed your stay at this checkpoint. I know you have to get going soon. I really enjoyed discussing this. It was a lot of fun. And I can only hope that you'll come visit again. So before you go, let me send you off with this. Please have yourself a damn good one and safe travels.